Warning, it's important that before performing this or any other safety or service procedure on any Heil product that the person performing the work has both read and firmly understands the parts and service manual as well as the product operator's manual, including the detailed safety instructions that accompany this vehicle. It's up to you to ensure safe operations and processes. You cannot outsource safety. If there is anything that's unclear or that you don't understand, do not attempt to operate the vehicle or perform any of the service or maintenance tasks called out in this video. Quarantine the area, walk away from the vehicle, and contact your supervisor immediately for clarification. It is also important to ensure you wear the appropriate personal protective equipment, hereafter referred to as PPE, prior to beginning this or any other service or maintenance procedure. This video is provided for informational purposes only and is not intended to be a comprehensive guide in any fashion. This video is not a substitute for proper training, qualification, and experience. Heil makes no warranty, guarantee, or promise by virtue of this video or the information herein. Please see applicable Heil product warranty statements. Please consult your workplace safety policies and relevant operator and service manuals. This video is intended to inform experienced technicians of generalized conditions that may occur on some units and to provide information that could assist in proper servicing of a unit. It is solely up to the technician to ensure the safety of the workplace and work process. Always watch the video in its entirety before beginning any service operation. Hey, I'm Travis Wallen, the service guru here at Heil Environmental in beautiful Fort Payne, Alabama. Thanks for joining me at the Service Shack. Today we're going to show the preventative maintenance that must be performed to ensure your Heil Durapack automated side load body is route ready every day. Without your Durapack body functioning correctly, the productivity of your unit will be impacted. This video will cover just the preventative maintenance of your Heil automated side load body, but if you need to know how to perform preventative maintenance on your Python or Rapid Rail automated lift arms, we have a great video on how to do this properly. Reference these videos and implement the called out maintenance intervals in conjunction with your body's preventative maintenance efforts. Before beginning, ensure you have the proper PPE necessary. At a minimum, we suggest eye protection, gloves, and safety shoes, but always follow your company's PPE guidelines. Now let's get started on your Heil Durapack ASL body preventative maintenance. First, open the tailgate and place it on tailgate props. Next, extend the ejector panel so that the follower panel clears the side door entrance. Then, ensure that the chassis gear is in the neutral position, the parking brake is applied and holding, and the chassis key switch is turned to the off position. Exit the cab using three points of contact, chalk the wheels, and clear the area of any unnecessary personnel. Note, normal maintenance intervals are based on eight hour day and average operating conditions. Severe use or adverse conditions will make it necessary to do this maintenance more frequently. The following is a daily checklist that is crucial to maintaining the life of your Durapack ASL body. While performing your daily pre-trip inspection, be sure to look for hydraulic leaks, check the hydraulic oil level, check the tailgate seal integrity, report any worn or failed components, and also check the body and arm operations to ensure they are performing correctly. Once completed, it's time to perform preventative maintenance on your Packer ejector cylinders. Before doing so, ensure the chassis battery disconnect is in the off position and apply lockout tagout procedure. If you're unsure how to apply a proper lockout tagout, these procedures can be referenced in our Service Shack video. Warning: Make sure that the unit is in lockout tagout mode before you perform maintenance service procedures or when you enter or climb on the hopper body related assemblies. Equipment is operational when the unit is not in lockout tagout mode. Equipment operated while you do maintenance or service procedures can cause serious injury or death. So also make sure to clear the area around the unit of all bystanders. Caution: Failure to follow these instructions can result in damage to the high body, truck, chassis, or can cause personal injury. To begin, using a plastic bladed shovel, clean behind the packer panel and pockets around the spherical bearings. Do not damage the cylinder rods by striking them with a metal object. Next, visually inspect the lube lines. 
if equipped, are connected and not damaged or leaking, and then visually inspect the packer tracks and hopper floor for excessive wear or damage, repair or replace as necessary. The following is a checklist that you should perform every week or 40 hours of operation. First, inspect the hydraulic plumbing, check hoses, tubes, and fittings for damage, wear, or leaks. Replace as necessary. Important, do not replace hoses with different sizes. This will cause an inconsistent hydraulic reaction. Next, check the control valve seals for leaks. Repair or replace if necessary. And check the battery cables from the battery to the starter for loose cables, rubbing or damage, and abrasion to the cables. Replace if necessary. Then check your front mount pump or power takeoff, hereafter referred to as PTO, for the following. Check the seals for leaks and operation. Replace if necessary. Check the drive line for smooth operation. Replace as necessary. Check the set screws for tightness. Tighten as necessary. And make sure the keys are in place. Replace if necessary. Next, you'll need to lubricate the grease fittings of your DuraPak ASL body. If you're not sure of the grease zerk locations, reference the chart in your service manual or the decal on your unit body. Be sure to clean the grease zerk fittings before installing the grease coupling on the zerk. Insert enough grease so that you can see the new grease just start to protrude out of the joint or bearing. Note, be sure that you're also greasing your automated lift arm as called out in your service manual or the decal on the side of your unit. Again, this is all covered in our preventative maintenance video on Python and Rapid Rail automated lift arms, and we highly recommend that you reference these videos in conjunction with this body preventative maintenance video. Once completed, it's time to perform preventative maintenance on your Packer ejector cylinders. Before doing so, ensure the chassis battery disconnect is in the off position and apply lockout tagout procedure. If you're unsure how to apply a proper lockout tagout, these procedures can be referenced in our Service Shack video. Warning: Make sure that the unit is in lockout tagout mode before performing any maintenance or service procedures, or when you enter or climb on the hopper body related assemblies. Equipment is operational when the unit is not in lockout tagout mode. Equipment operated while you do maintenance or service procedures can cause serious injury or death. So also make sure to clear the area around the unit of all bystanders. Caution: Failure to follow these instructions can result in damage to the Heil body, truck chassis, or can cause personal injury. To begin, grease the Packer ejector cylinder spherical bearings and pins. Then inspect the Packer ejector cylinder bearings, pins on both ends for wear, rust, or damage, and replace if necessary. The following is a checklist that you should perform every month or 200 hours of operation. Due to normal torsional vibrations of transmission mounted PTOs, it is important that service technicians include PTO transmission interface in their standard inspection and maintenance schedules. If a PTO inspection and preventative maintenance schedule is not followed, it is possible that the PTO mounting screws can come loose, resulting in transmission fluid leaks between the PTO and transmission and potential damage to the PTO or drivetrain. Before doing so, ensure the chassis battery disconnect is in the off position and apply lockout tagout procedures. If you're unsure how to apply a proper lockout tagout, these procedures can be referenced in our Service Shack video. With the unit in lockout tagout and the hydraulic pressure relieved, carefully follow these steps. Inspect for transmission fluid leaking from the PTO transmission interface thoroughly clean around this area. Using a torque wrench, check the PTO mounting screws. If they are set less than 45 foot-pounds, tighten to 45 foot-pounds. Using an oil resistant marker, add a witness mark on each screw head and across the PTO mounting flange. For future inspections, this will help identify if the PTO mounting screws loosen over time. Take the unit out of lockout tagout mode and operate unit functions. Check for transmission fluid leaks around the PTO transmission interface. If there are leaks, contact technical services. When there are no transmission fluid leaks, the PTO transmission interface inspection preventative maintenance has been completed. Next, it's time to perform preventative maintenance on your Packer ejector cylinders. 
Before doing so, ensure the chassis battery disconnect is in the off position and apply lockout tagout procedures. If you're unsure how to apply a proper lockout tagout, these procedures can be referenced in our Service Shack video. Warning: Make sure that the unit is in lockout tagout mode before performing any maintenance or service procedures, or when you enter or climb on the hopper body related assemblies. Equipment is operational when the unit is not in lockout tagout mode. Equipment operated while you do maintenance or service procedures can cause serious injury or death. So also make sure to clear the area around the unit of all bystanders. Caution: Failure to follow these instructions can result in damage to the Heil body, truck chassis, or can cause personal injury. To begin, inspect the Packer ejector panel bolt-in cylinder mounting bolts for tightness. The bolt torques should be 192 foot-pounds lubricated threads. Next, you'll need to inspect the Packer ejector panel start and stop travel positions. Proper maintenance of the Packer panel and ejector panel is important to overall operation of the unit. Failure to maintain proper adjustments can affect the payload and cause cylinder or structural damage. If necessary, adjust the proximity switches for retract and extend settings by first clearing the area of all unnecessary personnel, removing the lockout tagout, and following these steps. To make adjustments to the retract stroke, with the hydraulic system at operating temperature and the engine RPM held at a level to cause the Packer panel to move at its fastest speed during retract. On some units, the fastest Packer speed during retraction occurs when the engine is idle. First, adjust the retract proximity switch so the Packer panel retract function shuts off and the Packer panel comes to a rest two inches away from the front head. The outside proximity switch is located on the front head corner. Do not let the Packer panel contact the front head. After the retract stroke is set, cycle the Packer panel again. When the panel stops retracting, manually press the retract button and note the travel left between the packer panel and the front bulkhead. On some units, the outside proximity switch must be disconnected before you manually press the retract button. If the travel is less than two inches, repeat the adjustments of the retract proximity switch until the packer panel comes to rest two inches away from the front head. To make adjustments to the extend stroke, first extend the packer panel until the rollers on the packer follower panel stop and rest at the end of the fixed panel guides. Then adjust the full extend proximity switch inside proximity switch located on the front head. So the retract portion of the auto pack cycle starts just before the packer panel follower rollers leave the fixed panel guides. Improper adjustment of the extend stroke will result in less than advertised compaction forces. The following is a checklist that you should perform twice per year or 1000 hours. We recommend that you replace the hydraulic system filter after the first 30 days of operation, then every six months or 1,000 hours of operation, or when the filter bypass light is on. If you're unsure on how to change the hydraulic filter or reset the filter bypass light, the process can be referenced in our Service Shack video. Remember to replace the tank breather filter every time you replace the filter element. The following is a checklist that you should perform once per year or every 2,000 hours. Drain, flush, and refill the hydraulic system. Change the filter element. Change oil when the oil sample shows to change the oil. Then inspect the body undercoating and repair as necessary. That does it. Now you know the preventative maintenance that you can use on your Heil Durapack automated side loader body. If you still have questions, contact Heil Technical Services at 866-310-4345. Remember, this video only covers preventative maintenance of your Heil automated side load body. Ensure that you are also performing preventative maintenance on your Python or Rapid Rail automated lift arms as called out in your service manual or noted in our Service Shack videos. Remember, we're here to help in any way we can. So be safe out there and we'll see you next time here at the Service Shack.